So these are some signs of chemical changes. And whenever you see these signs, it means that a chemical change is happening. Okay, um, a transfer of energy, and it can be something like production of light, production of heat, even sometimes absorption of heat or production of sound. Number two, release of a gas. If you see some sort of bubbling or uh, production of a gas, it means also we have a chemical reaction happening. Color change. When the color of a substance changes, it also indicates uh, the occurrence of a chemical change. The formation of a precipitate, and we already discussed what's a precipitate before. We said sometimes when you mix two solutions together, so you get solution A and solution B, you mix solution A with solution B, you are going to get a solid substance that will form to the bottom of um, uh, of this uh, mixture, okay? And this solid substance, we call it uh, precipitate, okay? Um, then we have number five, change in uh, the smell. So change of odor or smell. So that's odor, it should be odor. Or smell, odor means the same thing as uh, smell, okay? Now we're gonna start with different separation techniques and this is subtopic 1.4. First of all, we are going to discuss 1.4.1, which is about filtration. Now, in order to do filtration, you must be using uh, a beaker, you need a funnel, we need also a filter paper, and the filter paper is going to trap the solids, uh, the big solid particles that are in the solution that you're trying to separate its components. What you get in the second beaker over here is called the filtrate, okay? And we need a steering row just to try to remove the solid particles that are blocking the way and not allowing the liquid uh, to go down, okay? So, for example, what can we be separating through filtration? So what is filtration first? Filtration is the process that separates solid from the liquid in a heterogeneous mixture. So in a heterogeneous mixture, such, such as sand and water, for example, you can be separating the sand from the water by using a filter paper, which is over here. Uh, you just have to put it inside the funnel and um, start filtration, okay? So the conical flask, this one is called a conical flask. This is the filter paper and this is the beaker. Now the filtrate is the liquid that you're going to get it in the conical flask. It's gonna flow through the filter paper and into the container, into the conical flask here. Now the residue is the solid that remains in the filter paper and it can be dried by spreading it on the filter paper after you finish your filtration experiment. Now, of course, in order to use the filter paper, you're not gonna put it as it is in the funnel. You have to fold it twice and then try to open it um, to have the shape of this funnel, like, uh, like a small cone, and then use it. I'm gonna teach you now how. Examples of some heterogeneous mixtures that have a solid and liquid uh, it can be sand and water. And this is what we're going to do right now because sand is insoluble in water. It means it doesn't dissolve in water. So the water is going to be the filtrate and the sand, it will be trapped in the funnel on the filter paper. And this is the residue. We call it the residue. Okay, so we have two new definitions here or two new terms that you need them. We have the filtrate and the residue. Uh, we can also use filtration for a mixture of salt, sugar, and alcohol. The salt is insoluble in alcohol, while sugar is soluble in alcohol. So what's going to happen is the salt is the residue, and sugar in, uh, uh, in the alcohol will be the filtrate. Okay? Last example, if you're using ground coffee beans and brewed coffee. Now, the ground coffee beans are the residue, while the brewed coffee is the filtrate because its um, particles are very, very small. They can pass it through, uh, through the pores of the filter paper uh, to the conical flask that is over here, and then you can collect the filtrate. Okay, now, of course, here you might be wondering if I'm using water with them. Of course, plus water. So you have in one uh, beaker, you have water, you have two types of coffee. You have the ground 
coffee beans and you have the brewed coffee now the ground coffee beans they won't be able to pass it through the pores and they will get stuck or trapped in the funnel on the top so this is another uh, diagram that shows you uh, the separation technique uh, which is filtration so here we have a solid and liquid the solid will be trapped in here and uh, the liquid will be filtered and we call it filtrate and whatever is trapped in the funnel is called a residue. Now we're going to discuss the second objective. So 1.4.2 and it's the second separation technique and we call it decantation. Now what is decantation? Decantation is the process of pouring off the liquid and leaving the solid behind without disturbing the sediment. What does this mean? And when I'm going to use um, this technique? Now, I can use this technique if I'm uh, dealing with, uh, let's say, sand and water, guys. Okay, so I can take it and start pouring that mixture in another beaker, in beaker two, let's say, okay? And um, as you know, the water in beaker two, you are just going to see water that is poured off. And what will remain in the first beaker will be sand. So after all, you, when you finish uh, the whole experiment, when you finish decantation, you will find that no more water will be remaining over here because all of them went to the second beaker and once this happens, you just have to stop pouring more of this mixture because water will go first and then sand will remain in the first beaker, in beaker one. Now, you might tell me, but what if the, the, the mixture of sand and water was disturbed? Now, of course, you have before starting decantation, you have to leave that mixture on the bench for a while, okay, let's say for like five minutes. Okay, and in this case, the sand will sink to the bottom and the water is going to float on the surface. And at that time, you start doing your decantation. Okay, so example, separating the components of muddy river water. And all what you need is beakers and a glass rod. The glass rod um, will be to make sure that there's no water left there. So you can just like separate the, mix, the, the particles of sand and water, guys. And um, what is left at the end when you just get rid of the water and the sand is left there, we call it sediment. It's the substance that remains in the beaker after pouring the liquid. This is another diagram for decantation. So uh, here we have water, let's say, and here you have the sand. The water will be poured off in the second beaker. And this is clear wa uh, water. That's the glass rod to help in decantation. And the sediment will be left over here, okay? Sublimation, boys. And that's the third technique we're gonna discuss. It's learning objective 1.4.3. And sublimation is the process, as you know, of converting substances directly into the vapor or the gaseous state without converting it into the liquid. So it's from solid to gas straight away. Okay, you have, for example, um, a dry ice that can sublime easily because um, uh, at room temperature it does sublimation. Okay, so anyways, how can I use sublimation as a separation technique? That's the question. Now, the vapors on cooling give back solid and it's called sublimate. So once the vapor that will form, uh, they uh, cool down, they are going to form solids and this, will, uh, this is the sublimate. This method is used to separate the solid components from the mixture which are directly converted into vapors on heating whereas the remaining components are not affected by heat, okay? Examples can be ammonium chloride. These are examples of some substances that can sublime. Naphthalene, uh, camphor, iodine, benzoic acid, all of these substances, they can 
uh, uh, go through sublimation at room temperature. So for example, if you have a mixture, let's say of uh, iodine and any other substance, once you heat the iodine just a little bit, just a little bit of heat, it's gonna help you to what? It's gonna help you to um, sublime it, to change the solid, the solid crystals that you have or uh, the solid substance that you have and make it a gaseous substance okay now um it's better to do so it's better to what to heat it a little bit so i'm just gonna take the whole box over here and dip it in hot water okay uh, and like this you will help the the small solid substances that are here which is iodine to convert directly into a gas so the process is very easy, guys. All what you have to do is to get the mixture of salt. Here we have salt like, let's say, NaCl plus the ammonium chloride, okay? So ammonium chloride, which is NH4Cl, uh, okay? Now, that one can sublime, but NaCl does not sublime easily. So what we are going to do is we will start heating the mixture. We have two solid substances. Both of them are solids, okay? Now, when we start heating the mixture, the ammonium chloride will sublime. It means it's going to become a gas, okay? So it changes from a solid to a gas. Now, this gas, ammonium chloride, will not remain in the gaseous form. It's going to cool down and form again ammonium chloride, but in the solid form, okay? Or in the solid state. Now, as you can see, we are using here an inverted funnel, Okay, that we are just going to um, place it on top of a plate where you have your mixture. And you need also to plug it on the top, or actually that's the bottom of it, but now it's its top. Plug it with a small piece of cotton, just to make sure that the vapor of ammonium chloride is not escaping into the atmosphere. And then all that you have to do now, once the solid ammonium chloride uh, deposits, okay, through deposition, of course, that's gas to solid, we call it deposition, deposits on the inside walls of the funnel you can just like uh, collect uh, collect them take the funnel up okay take the funnel up or off the plate and collect the solid ammonium chloride okay and this is how you will be able to separate NaCl from ammonium chloride Another separating technique, which is evaporation, is also very important. And with this one, uh, we can use it in order to conf convert a liquid into uh, uh, the vapor state at any temperature. Now, this method is used for recovering soluble solid solutes from the solution. So, for example, if um, you had, let's say, sodium chloride crystals in a solution or copper sulfate crystals in a solution, it means you have copper sulfate plus water, okay? How can you separate copper sulfate from water? Because copper sulfate is soluble in water, guys. So all what you have to do is to get this evaporating dish, okay? And add your solution inside it. So what you're gonna do is you will add your solution here and you start heating now, in the labs, we're going to use also hot plates, or you can use Benson burners. It's uh, the same. There's no difference. Okay. So, do not touch this button. Touch it. Only change the temperature. And actually, I, you just have to turn this and make sure that it's at 100 degrees Celsius because we need it to be at its maximum capacity, running at maximum capacity. And then switch the on button. Okay. So, we place the solution, switch the on button, uh, set the temperature at 100 degrees Celsius, and wait. Now, all that's going to happen is the water is going to evaporate, and it will form. Water evaporates, and actually it's going to form the water vapor. And what will be remaining inside is the salt itself, the salt, the crystal uh, uh, crystal, uh, the crystals of this salt will remain in the evaporating dish. So this is how we were able to collect the uh, sodium chloride again and separate it from water. Or in, if you were not using sodium chloride, the copper sulfate. So whatever is your solute, and remember guys, the solute is the substance that can dissolve in another substance. So for example, if you add table salt, 
in water the, and, you, and you start stirring the mixture, the stable salt is going to dissolve in water. The same goes for copper sulfate. If you add copper sulfate uh, in water, it's going to dissolve in water. Now, how to separate these two substances? By evaporation, okay? Because when you evaporate the solution of copper sulfate and water, the water will evaporate and the copper sulfate will remain or the salt will remain in the evaporating dish. So this is another diagram for the same experiment, but in here we're using a Bunsen burner uh, with a flame. Uh, we don't have that in our labs. We're going to use just the hot plates instead of that. Last technique for today, which is about crystallization. And what is crystallization? So from its name, uh, it's, it means the formation of crystals. So how can we form a crystals, okay? And how can we use it as a separation technique? Now, this technique is used for obtaining a solid compound in a pure and geometrical form, okay? The impure sample of the solid substance is dissolved in the suitable solvent to make the saturated solution at the higher temperature. So, basically, guys, all that you have to do is to follow these steps. Step number one is to have a solution or to have a mixture, not a solution, to have a mixture of, let's say, a solvent and a solid. Now, impure solid, it means this is a solid that is not really pure. Uh, maybe it contains other small substances or particles that are not the same uh, material. So all what you have to do is to try to dissolve it in the solvent. It can be copper sulfate, for example. Now, step number two is to take this mixture after you try to stir it, okay, uh, and start heating it until it evapor until the most of the solvent has evaporated. Okay, again, we can use hot plates instead of Benson burners. Now, the hot solution is allowed to cool. And now when the hot solution cools down, the solid will appear as pure crystals. Okay, now when we heated the solution, boys, um, actually, all of the solute will get dissolved because when you increase the temperature, you will increase also the solubility of substances in a solvent. Now, when you leave it to cool down, okay, and actually to cool down, it means you have to come the next week and check what's going to happen. So the results will not be seen during the same lesson. You have to come another time, maybe week next week, okay, or week after in order to check all the uh, new changes that have come or that, uh, uh, that were made uh, on that solution. Now, the hot solution is allowed to cool, and once it's allowed to cool, the solid appears as pure crystals. Step number four, the cold solution is poured off, so we just have to, cool, uh, to pour it to obtain the crystals. And the crystals may be dried by pressing them between sheets of filter paper, and then we leave them for a while until they're completely dry, and then we can collect them. And when you collect them, you are going to, to see uh, the real crystals that we saw them in the previous slide.